Lawn Care Ninjas, what is going on on this beautiful Whack -a, -granny Wednesday. Whack a Granny Wednesday? Why is it a Whack a Granny Wednesday? Uh, we're out here whacking these granny whacking these granny yards. That's right, ninjas. How you doing this morning, afternoon, good evening, wherever the heck you may be? We are out here just knocking them out, slicing and dicing, of course. Just knocked out a couple yards and just pulled up at this next one. So I wanted to just go ahead and start the video and also uh, show something to you that something that I've never seen. Have you ever seen something like that? No, I haven't. I've never seen anything like that, especially in uh, as long as I've been in business, but also even before that. Just the fact that I mean, I've been cutting grass since. I mean, I don't know, teenage years, maybe even earlier, you know what I mean? I mean, when I was a little kid, I was cutting grass with my dad. But anyway, what color is grass? I thought it was a green, but I don't Well, it, it could be yellow too, if it's dying grass, you know? Yeah. Could be yellow, could be green. Never seen any orange? No. Never seen any purple? No, Never yeah, seen any uh, pink? Never seen any black? Black grass? No, I mean, that, that would be bad, right? I mean, that, yeah, that'd be like, be very you've got some kind of, uh, serious <laughs> death <laughs> in your grass, right? That's what I'm thinking of. But what about white grass? You ever seen white grass? No, I can't say I have. Never seen white grass. Neither have I, ninjas. Have you ever seen... Sorry, man. Dust. It's just dust. But yeah, yeah, yeah. Ninjas were standing me, of course. <laughs> ever seen white grass? i never seen white grass. Well, we have right now. And we wanted to start the video, of course, but also ask you, have you ever seen white grass? And do you know what it could be is it some kind of a disease is it just dying grass or what was the other one uh, uh mildew mildew maybe it's some mildew so let me show you what i'm talking about so there's a couple of spots over here this is the neighbor's yard by the way and it has creeped up into my customer's yard and this yard at least not by me it's not getting sprayed i mean if it was heck it'd be the whole yard and there's none over there there's none over there so it's literally through here and there's some all the way down there into the neighbors look at this for a second we thought maybe somebody was messing around with some you know spray paint or something but that's not the case here i mean look at this i've never seen anything like it and it, it like i said it, look it's starting to like cover this whole area i mean there's little spots through there right here and this is where it's like heavy duty and it looks like i want to say it started from her yard over or this neighbor's because it looks like where some of the weeds are that's where somebody maybe put something down but somehow it made it over into my customer's yard too i don't know i don't know this is pretty weird but i definitely have never witnessed anything like this and this was not like this last week because this is a weekly account do you ninjas pick up any paper for your customers that gets thrown in the front entrance? I do. I don't know. One, it's nice. You just put it down here. I put it down here for them. So when they get home, it's right here next to the uh, garage door. But also, it's not in our way when we're blowing off and mowing. And, and let me tell you something. When you're mowing and you got these little pieces of, you know, the newspaper around and stuff, it has happened to me many times. You're gonna be flying through, or maybe not even flying, but coming around the corner, you don't see it, your blades are on. You got a disaster, ninjas. And what is the worst thing than having to spend 30, 40 minutes here, depending how many newspapers there are, or how big they are, or whatever, and debris literally flying through the whole neighborhood. And you can never pick up all of it. You'll only pick up the big chunks, but the rest of it, you just, it's just gonna go fly around the whole neighborhood. You wanna talk about pissing off the whole neighborhood. That's an easy way to piss off the whole neighborhood.
the Spartan mower for this little granny yard just because I do have the shoe block around here and there's beds as you can see all the way around me and the, I try to avoid it of course the shoe blocker helps a tremendous amount it really does but you still can't get 100% no grass in the bed so we always when we blow off will blow off if we have gotten any in there but with having the shoe blocker I mean it's very little so that's why I use the big boy here just because it has a shoe blocker so and I got beds all around me I'm not going to record any here i'm actually going to go ahead and conclude the video but i have something very interesting to share with you something that i have touched on a little bit a couple weeks ago and uh dust it's a little windy out here too touched on a little bit a couple weeks ago and then i got a confirmation this afternoon i ended up talking to um the person on the phone and so let's uh conclude the video and let me tell you all about it so concluding this video and also touching on, like I said, a little bit what we talked about a few weeks ago. I know I mentioned it. And some of you may know what I'm talking about if you follow me on Instagram at SG Ninjas Official, because I did uh, post a story post a little bit earlier and kind of mentioned it. So I have been, I've been getting messed up and I've been getting screwed basically on my taxes for the last three years. And 2017 I owed a decent amount of money and that was like the first year where I started to kind of like eyebrows started like I raised my eyebrows and I was like I was telling mama ninja and I was talking to my CPA like is this accurate you know am I supposed to owe this kind of money and uh they were like yeah this is how much you made you know blah 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 blah, blah. okay <clears throat> all right so I paid it so I, you know, by the way, I, I pay every year. I don't, there is no refund or returns. Um, I haven't, I don't remember the last time when I got actually a refund or a return. So I paid it. Now in 2018, um, I made more money. So the business is growing. And, but I did a lot of purchases. I, I mean, gosh, gosh. I mean, ninjas, you saw I bought the shed, right? Yeah, I bought the carport, I bought different mowers, I swapped them out, some I purchased just flat out brand new. Um, you know, and then of course all your regular deductions, the mileage, you know, the um, uh, the mileage on the truck, the fuel on the equipment, uh, things of that nature. I'm not gonna try to go into it details wise just because, you know, they would take forever. But I mean, I've had enough of my deductions, so to say. And so I felt like, okay, I made more money in 2018, but I've got more deductions. You know, hopefully it'll be about the same as 2017, which was already bad, but I, you know, I made more money. So I was like, if it's about the same or close to it, I'm okay. Well, I ended up getting hit with a huge bill in 2018. I'm talking huge. And I about had a stroke. <laughs> I'm not going to lie. You know, ninjas, when you are, and this is why it's so important running a business and really staying on top of it with taxes and, and taking care of your business. This is probably the hardest part running an actual accurate business. Uh, it's like I've said before, it's easy to come out here and just cut grass, especially if you've got the right equipment, you know what you're doing, you enjoy it. I mean, this is nothing. You can go out here and make a couple hundred bucks a day easy, you know, or, or even a thousand dollars a day. Just depends how much you, or a couple thousand dollars a day. Just depends how much of a big company you are. So that's not the hard part. Mowing grass is easy. The hardest part about running your business and being self-employed and an entrepreneur is taking care of the things that are running in the background, the things that are such as taxes and many other 
factors or many other things but so 2018 got i got hit so freaking i got slammed okay so i was like looking at my cpa i was already at that point still had a little like confusion with him from 2017 and i'm like dude what are you doing what is going on i've got i'm getting hammered here you know look at all the things that i'm buying i'm deducting you know all this and basically long story short he kind of gave me that look and said nick are you just trying not to pay taxes kind of like an attitude type ordeal maybe not really an attitude but i took it that way you know what i mean i mean i'm already frustrated from 2017 and the last thing i need to hear is 2018 a bigger bill and then you want to tell me nick are you not trying to pay taxes at all so my response to him was like no i'm not not trying to pay taxes i just don't see why I end up owing so much and more than 2017. It's not like I'm making millions of freaking dollars a year. And, uh, you know, that's where it was at. We went through everything. He's like, this is what you owe. Well, at that point, I started telling Mama Ninja, I said, we need to look around. We need to shop around. This is crazy. But the deadline was right there. I had no choice but to pay it. Now, keep in mind, I paid 2017 and I paid now 2018. Okay, that's a lot of money. And if you want to know how much I paid in 2017 and 18, I'll tell you this. If you put those two together, I could have paid off my house. Yeah. Okay. So I paid it and then I got busy. 2018 was another year. Remember, last year was a really crazy year for me. Um, 2018, yeah. 2018, I paid it. This was already into 2019. Last year, I went solo for uh, basically right in through the season. Remember, I, I had a lot of guys come and go. It kept me busy going solo. I actually finished the season off solo, if a lot of you remember. So that kept me really busy, and I didn't really have time to really sit down and try to you know, think about this and try to find somebody else or anything like that. Well, these taxes came around. Of course, they got pushed three months because of a whole pand pandemic stuff and the COVID. Uh, but still, I'm busy during the summer. It's just, it creeped up on me. And this is one of those things that'll happen when you're self-employed. It just, things happen. You have to stay on top of it. So, taxes came around. I told uh, Mama Ninja, let's use the same guy. Now, listen, I've been using this guy, Ninjas, for, gosh, seven, eight years, six years, seven, eight years, something like that. And he was actually really good. Let me turn on the truck just because the AC here. He was really good there for a while because I was a smaller business. So we were dealing with smaller numbers and I still had my deductions and stuff. And um, I didn't know anything. I was right at, but you know, even, or maybe they owed me a couple hundred bucks. And it was no big deal. Even when I started owing a couple hundred bucks, I didn't even have a problem when I started paying in just a couple of thousand dollars, you know, a couple thousands of dollars, you know, 2,000, 5,000, no big deal. I mean, 5,000 at that, I mean, it would have been high, but like two, 3,000, no big deal. And he was fine. I felt like he was fine. He was, he was okay. He did a good job, you know, I, and no problem. And he was very reasonable on his rates and all that. But these last three years, really, we've just gotten out of touch. And anyway, so he hit me. I didn't have time to 2019 or anything like that. So I went out, I was like, let's just use him again and see what he says this time. And he hit me with another huge bill. It was a little less than the last year's. Last year's was the biggest balance I've ever owed in my life or in my business uh, career as long as I've been in business. And so this one, this year, last year's was a lot, a little less, probably by about hmm, eight or $9,000 less. Still pretty freaking high. Again, I was in a pickle, so to say. I had to pay. Time was running out. So I went ahead and paid it. So three years in a row, ninjas, I paid so much money that I could have not only paid off my house and probably bought another tiny truck. Okay, cash. That's how much I paid. So I finally decided it's time to look around. Made a few phone calls, talked to a few people, found a new CPA and actually a whole group of them. I think there's like five, six of them working together. It's like, I don't know if it's family owned or not. And they were like, we're ha you can go back and refile three years back legally. I said, perfect, because that's the last three years that I've started to like freak out. So I turned in all the 2017, 2018, and then the most recent 2019. Speaking of the 2019, I had to pay 
but I told my old CPA, I said, I'm not filing. I'll pay the balance. And you always want to pay the balance ninjas because if you don't, man, I'm telling you, the IRS is going to mess you up. They're going to give you all kinds of fees, penalties. I mean, you can have thousands and thousands of dollars in penalties and fees. They don't play around. So I went ahead and paid it, but I told him, put an extension. I don't want to file it just yet because this is why I already had in mind I'm going to be looking around and getting second opinion. Well, I got the extension, extended, so I've got till October, and I went ahead and paid. So anyway, I turned in my 2017, 2018, and then the 2019 to the new new team, and they looked at it for free. They they were like, we'll look at the old returns and all of that for free and just take a look at it and see if we could save you any money. Well, they looked at it, and they told me that they could save me between ten to $15,000. I spoke with him today on the phone. He said, honestly, Nick, we say that to just be on the safe side because we never want to give you an amount that, you know, we, we're going to save you this much money or give you a refund and then we don't end up coming up with that. So he goes, you're probably looking somewhere close to fifteen to 20000 per year. Per year, Ninjas, but he said, let's be on the safe side and just say ten to fifteen. So we'll keep it on the safe side. Uh, ten to fifteen, possibly fifteen to 20000 per year. Now, times that three years in a row, Ninjas. Anyway, he told me that I, I literally wanted him to say it very clear to me over the phone. I said, are you telling me that I'm going to get a refund from the IRS, a check for forty-five dollars to $50,000? And he said, yes. So anyway, I know this is long, 10 minutes, I already talked, but I wanted to, this is so important, Ninjas, this is so important when you're running a business and you go into self-employed and you want to be in entrepreneurship, you quit your job and you end up doing this, do not fall for this. You need to find yourself a CPA that is not so conservative to write things off. You know what else he told me, that what they told me that my uh, old CPA was doing wrong? He was categorizing everything wrong. He put me in the wrong category. He put me, he said, he put you in the wrong category and, and, and didn't move the numbers around where they should be. He was basically just doing a standard, simple, and safe and you know standard and simple and safe is not what I'm about you ninjas already know that I'm all about risks because I have risked to quit my job to do this I have risked everything I've risked I, I have risked so much and fought so much to get this business to where it is and everything that I have none of it was given to me for free I have earned every single bit of it whether it be a truck my home, my equipment, my trailer, my mowers, whatever you want to, whatever you see that I ever show you ninjas, I've earned it one way or another. So I, I have been busting my tail now, this is my 11th year in business, and the last thing I want to do is owe the IRS thousands of dollars where it's going to break me or feel like where it punishes me at the end of the year and I'm back in the hole. And I, I work, 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 work the following summer, the following year. I build it up, build it up, build it up. And then for them to just rob me. I felt like I was telling him over the phone today. I said, I felt like I had been robbed. And he agreed. He's like, yes. So the forty-five dollars to $50,000 I'm getting ready to get back is really not free money, ninjas. It's money that I've paid in. So anyway, but I do have to pay them as well. If you want a good CPA that's on this scale, on this level, you'll know when you are on a certain level where you need a good CPA. Don't be afraid to pay them. They're going to cost a couple thousand dollars, okay? But it's worth it. Um, my CPA was only charging me 500 bucks a year. Now, now I understand it. I didn't understand it. I thought it was like, oh, he's giving me a good deal. Bull crap, he's not giving me a good deal. He's not really doing anything except simple, safe, and standard and just 500 bucks and you're done so you know a lot of you ninjas who are getting into the business who are brand new and just getting into the business maybe you're still doing your taxes with like one of these places that you go you know um h&r block for example i've used them for years it's all good handy dandy when you're small you're just getting started you're showing a negative you're not making a lot of money you've got more deductions than earnings because you're trying to build this thing up and that's understandable that will happen it'll take you years but at some point, ninjas, you will get there and you're going to need a CPA. And the whole point of this story is to share with you the mistake I made. I should have done it a long time ago and give you a heads up 
This is what can happen and will happen to you as well as long as you're growing that business. The more money you make, the more money they wanna take. And you need to be smart and get advice for what are you gonna do with your money don't sit on your money put, make sure you have a savings but invest your money buy pieces of property see by now ninjas i've been held back i've been robbed by now i would have been already out what's up uh, you done yep. we'll go mow all right three inches that's all you got man <laughs> Busy bee. So by now I would have already been out of my home. I would have probably already had my own commercial building. Cause my goal is to buy a piece of property and get some kind of a building on there and run my business from there. I don't want to run my business from a home. I want to separate my home and my business. But I haven't been able to ninjas because this has held me back. Cause every year I get punished and every year I'm in, I end up having to pay a huge amount. And it basically dries me out. It empties me. And then I have to rebuild, rebuild, rebuild. And then next year, just to find out I'm getting hit again. So now that I have figured things out and straightened things out, and this money's coming back to me, 2021, 2022, that's where it's going to be, ninjas. It's time to take this thing to a whole nother level. See, I've been saying it. I've been saying, I got to take this thing to another level. I'm planning on, but I keep getting crushed at the end of the year, every year. And it, 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 it'll mess you up, ninjas. If you've never financially struggled, because I have financially struggled majority of my life. But if you've never financially struggled in your business to the point that it ever take everything gets taken away from you, let me tell you something. It will mess you up mentally. It'll mess you up mentally. It'll mess you up to the point you are not even interested in cutting grass anymore. I mean, it, it, and it can affect your relationship it can it can affect your marriage it can affect your health you know money stress is a big deal and you really you really need to stay on top of this so you don't get to that point luckily i've never i've never gotten to that point where i am super super stressed and like uh, you know i'm i'm completely out of money but you know it has stressed me out i i mean i i have been stressed these last 3 years dramatically so i'm sharing this with you ninjas I know this is longer than I, it's always like this, but I'm sharing this with you so you don't go through this. When you start being told that you're owing thousands of dollars, please go get a second opinion. Go to somebody else and see what they tell you. Don't just take their word. And the whole H&R block and whatever else maybe that you use, that's not going to cut it forever. You can only do that for a couple of years while you're building that business up. But once you get to that point... And you know how you'll know you, you'll be ready to turn down, turn that down and go to an actual CPA that that's all they do, their full-time job and they work for you, is when you start owing that big amounts of chunks of money. When you start, when you start being told that, you know, you got to pay in 10, 20, 30, $40,000. Yeah, that's when you are going to go, uh, I'm going to go get a second opinion. So anyway, it's definitely not only made my day, made my week, it's made my year. So, good things to come. Many plans in the future that I have planned for 2018 and 2019 that I had to put aside and freeze because I've been getting robbed over here. But now that that's figured out, once all this clears, I get my refund back. 2021, 2022. Stay tuned. Hope that's helped you. Thank you for watching another video. Only good things to come from here on. I gotta go. Peace.